So hello. So my name is I'm the first Sylvain, Sylvain Bobo. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about graffiti. Uh, graffiti was created uh, uh, because it's uh, first we were working on Skydive, which is a, um, a networking tool. So, so it's uh, one of the features. It uh, it allows you to get the topology of your uh, whole network infrastructure, and um, and to, to to retrieve the topology and to visualize it. And so and so the the data model that we use for Skydive is a graph. And so, so we extracted this part and we created a, a brand new project from this, which is Graffiti. So the, the, the engine is uh, embedded in, inside Skydive. So it's a, it's, a, it's a graph engine, which is uh, highly event-based. Uh, so um, everything in Skydive uh, goes through, uh, through, through events. Uh, it has uh, interesting features. Uh, uh, one of the interesting features we have is that it's, uh, it allows to, to time travel. So it allows you to, to query the graph um, as it was at a certain point of time. Um, it's um, it's uh, highly available, so you can have like multiple, um, um, we'll see later, but uh, one of the, the components is the, hu uh, the, the hubs. So we can have multiple hubs, uh, and so it provides you high availability for your graph. And it also it provides a load balancing because uh, we'll see that um, we can you can subscribe to multiple hubs and so and to read uh, to 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 balance the load. Um, uh, so why why did not we create uh, did we create our own uh, um, engine? It's because first we we were using uh, existing graph engines and uh, but we had. First, uh, the, the constraint of the, the embedding, so uh, that, that was the, our first constraint. And, uh, but also we had constraint, we wanted to be able to easily uh, extend the, the, the query language that we were using. In fact, in Skydive, we implemented, uh, in Graffiti, we implemented the, the our own uh, Gremlin parser and uh, exe uh, executor. And so we wanted to be able to add custom steps very easily, and even steps that are not really uh, graph related. Um, so that's the architecture of uh, of graffiti. Uh, we have a few. Uh, so the first components is the pod. So the pod is a um, is a small agent. It has just a, a local graph, a, uh, just part of the graph. Um, that's where you create the nodes. Uh, so, uh, in our case, the, in, this case uh, in the case of Skydive, this is uh, the pods are running on the m machines of the infrastructure, and so the, the graph is populated on the on the pod, and then the pod forwards its graph to uh, another component, which which is the hub, and the hub uh, has the the whole graph. So it it resides uh, it's uh, in memory, but it uh, it's also persistent. So it's uh, you can also have a, a database behind it. Uh, so as you can see, the, the hubs are replicated. So they are uh, connected, and the pods are connected to multiple hubs, uh, just in case of failover or uh, load balancing. Mm. So this, regarding the event mechanism, so it's a, it's a graph as a, as a pub sub. So uh, you can so in, in uh, when internally so when it's uh, using in, uh, in this uh, embedded mode uh, you you register callbacks on the graph and then your code is uh, uh, is uh, triggered when any event happens on the graph uh, you can also uh, uh, subscribe to the graph uh, externally uh, through through a web socket so that's the way the the web uh, the web UI works. Um, and you can also publish to to uh, the graph, so you can publish to a pod or to a hub. It doesn't doesn't make any differ difference. It's the same API. Um, you can also um, uh, subscribe just to a portion of the graph if you are not in interested in all the events of the graph, just a few nodes or so a subset. You can subscribe on this. Uh, so the, the events that you get are pretty straightforward. It's the node creation, the edge creation, the updates, the deletes. 
um, so we we the messages are encoded in, in a, uh, different formats. You can use JSON for the web UI, obviously, and uh, and but you can so also use a, a protobuf for performance reasons. So that's the way the, the, the way the um, the pods and their hubs are connect, uh, talking together is through using web uh, protobuf. So regarding the history, uh, so we we keep every uh, every modification on the graph uh, generates a new revision of the elements. Um, so th that allows us to do two things. It's just to say, uh, show me the graph as it, as it was as a specific point of, ta of time but also to see uh, all the modifications that um, on, uh, that happened on, on a node or, or subset of the graph. So you can see, like, they give me what happened to this node, or, uh, and you will get all the, all the events, all the modifications and the revisions of our, of our node. So to, do, to achieve this, so to query, uh, to use this time context, uh, we introduced a new step, a gremlin step, which we called at. And you can see here that um, you can you can specify your time. So let's say that let this gremlin expression says uh, the graph uh, <coughs> how it was uh, one minute ago, or you can specify a, a date. Uh, and you can also say um, give a time and then the the period uh, <coughs> where you want to get the you get the revision from. Uh, so we support as a backend, uh, we support Elasticsearch, um, but uh, we also support OrientDB, but it's, I would not recommend you to, to use this. Uh, so because yeah, our, our, all our efforts are uh, put uh, on the Elasticsearch backend. We also have like, uh, in the case of Elasticsearch, to, to, to maintain, uh, so that the, the index are not too big. We have a rolling index mechanism. A rolling index mechanism. So when you can set like uh, I don't I don't want my own, uh, index to be more than a specific size or a specific number of nodes. Uh, so to achieve high availability, uh, we have a repli replication mechanisms between the hubs. Um, and for the load balance, for the load balancing, we the pods are, uh, use a round robin uh, connections uh, to the to the hubs. Uh, we handle the recon uh, reconnection. So if the network uh, connectivity goes down, then the pods will uh, automatically reconnect uh, and uh, re uh, and uh, resync their their graph with the hubs. Uh, and we have, um, <coughs> and for the rolling index, this has to be done on, on a single uh, hub. So we have a master election, that, and for this we use a etcd. Uh, so to write uh, Gremlin extensions, uh, those have uh, they have to be written in Go because as, uh, uh, Graffiti is written uh, entirely in Go. Um, and so, and it, it, and. Uh, and your new step uh, will be available automatically available through the REST API. Um, so we did not implement uh, all uh, the Gremlin uh, the spe specification, only the one that, uh, we were really using. So we have all the basic uh, uh, Gremlin steps and the one we added for specifically for, for the time selection. But so <coughs> we also added steps for uh, uh, networking purpose, so in, in the case of Skydive, so the main user of Graffiti, uh, we added the flow step, so that allows you to, uh, you can retrieve the network, network flows of your infrastructure, you can get some metrics, you can have like sockets, so those are, I won't explain this because this is uh, network specific stuff, but uh, the fact is that it trends, it, uh, it provides a graph transform, uh, transformation. So if you do you use the socket steps, then you have a new graph. And then you can also subscribe to this new graph and get uh, the, the same feature that you have with uh, the regular graph. And now, sorry? Demo. 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 So here, pass on.
Okay, so this is the first demo. Uh, so just 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 pause it. Yes, just just to introduce you what what it is. Fine. This is this is a web UI that we are using for Sky, which is the the, the core project for Graffiti. But definitely, it can be used with with. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it can be used. Uh, it was used. It was used by Skylight. Sorry, but definitely you can use it with Graffiti. Yeah. So that's what you can get. Uh, so you can explore the graph. It's a kind of a tree because of, because of uh, Skylight. But then you have a, a real graph. We can see we have multiple parents, and you, you can walk through the graph. You will get metadata. Uh, and yes. <coughs> sorry. And, uh, and the metadata, you can, you can have multiple metadata, and you have a way to render them properly uh, according to, what, to your needs. You have a way to, to, to do search, to, to select uh, the column that you want to see. Uh, you can describe your metadata and the rendering uh, used for that within a config file. Um, so this, since this is an embedded project, uh, you embed your uh, graffiti in your project, and you provide metadata, and then the web UI will render it uh, properly. Uh, and thanks to the history, for example, for the for the matrix here, it's for networking purpose. But then, thanks to the history, we can we can get a graph of the data, uh, requesting the, the yes the a period of time, something like this. Uh, and then we uh, thanks to the web UI, we have a, we have a way to tag uh, the links and the the nodes, and then you, you it will generate uh, different views. So yeah, that's another, another view. So it's, it's a Kubernetes infrastructure, so you can get the infrastructure, I mean the physical infrastructure, and then the logical one. And, and basically, we, we have a kind of layers of graphs. So And we, you can select the types, the, the link types you want to see. And, and now we are going to see that uh, we are going to leverage the filtering subscribing mechanism. So yeah, when we click on this, the web UI is going to reconnect to the, to the graffiti, subscribe it to a, a, another subgraph and getting another view. So meaning just a subgraph. So here that just uh, the namespaces. And yeah, and you, you can do you can do a quick search thanks to the web UI. Uh, there is a kind of index, and then it will open properly the the node. And yeah. So just to summarize a bit, when to use uh, Graffiti and when to, n to not use it. So definitely, if you want to write an, a Golang application uh, having an embedded uh, graph engine, you can use it. Uh, it's schema-less or, or not. Uh, you can have schema, and that's useful sometimes. Uh, if you want to have, like, uh, like we did for Skydive, if you want to have a, a, a kind of grimming language, a common grooming language, but uh, being able to extend it in a, for specific purpose, you can definitely do this. Uh, if you want to have a distributed architecture, that's good too. And, and we do support hierarchy, graph, hierarchy of graphs. So meaning if you want to have a subset of the infrastructure having a specific graph and then propagating the graph uh, in a chain, uh, that's possible. And attaching ACL, that's, that's pretty useful because you can get, you can authorize some persona to do something or to subscribe to something. And what to, no, to not use it, so definitely this is not good for uh, any graph-specific algorithm in high computing stuff. Uh, this is not the purpose of the, of the project. It's definitely an embedded project. And if you have node or edges with a lot of metadata, binary attached to the metadata, that's not good too. Uh, again, that's, that's definitely an embedded project. For the web UI, it's definitely even based. I will show you that just after. You can do search, as, as, I, as I explained, uh, filtering. Everything, you can put everything in a config file, so you can really customize everything. Uh, that's, that's one view we, you can get with, uh, that's definitely a network infrastructure, but you can see there is plenty of nodes. And I do have another demo. So basically, the demo is about <coughs> doing something which is completely outside of the scope of Skydive. So not networking purpose. That's really a demo. So it will be a Python, um, a Python demo, watching a, a directory, creating node for files or folders, 
creating edges for uh, any kind of links between uh, the entities. So basically, the code is like this. Uh, we are watching, thanks to our notifier folder, and we create nodes when we see a file or, or, or a folder, and then if it's a, if it's a, um, we are linking the, the, the new file to the root uh, node, and if it's a folder, we, we do this again. So that's fairly simple. This code is in Python. Okay, thank you. This code is in Python, meaning that uh, we are, you do have with Graffiti a Python uh, binding, so you can, it's not mandatory to interact with Graffiti with in Golang. And I'm going to show you that. It's going to be quick. So first we start the, the watcher. So it's going to watch a, a folder, and then I, I run the script, and we are waiting a bit. So we have a host. And then if we expand it, we have a, our first folder, which is watched. And then we start the demo, demo .sh, which is going to create a few files. So and ju just to show you that event base, uh, we will see the web UI in, uh, reacting on, on the events. And yes, few folders. And then finally, uh, we will see a, a sim link between, between two files. Uh, yeah. yeah, just here, that's a sim link. And yeah, you, you have a new link types that you can select if you want. And then the filtering again. Okay, I want to see only the folders and that's what, that's what I have. And I think that it's, so if you have, if there is any question. Is there any questions? Yeah. I have a question. Uh, how do you handle deletions? Or can you handle deletions because of the possibility of going back in time? Yeah, sorry, uh, deletion. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that's an event. That's Is part of the event stored. Just repeat the question for. The oh, yes, yes. How do we handle deletions of information? Nodes or edges, for example? Yeah. So basically, uh, we store this information within the data store. So that, that's, that's one of the events we store. We store creation, deletion, updates. Maybe you want to. Yeah, you you mean in the data uh, how you restore it in the database or uh, the way we we mark a node as deleted or yeah, yeah because every node has a lifetime basically as a created and mm -hmm. deleted times and then we just select the nodes that are still living and uh, at the at the time we query and so the that's store yeah grows over time so because at some point in time you have so much data like yeah that's what yeah yeah that's what we we do have a rolling index stuff uh, okay yeah that that's uh, that's one of the reason. And, and, uh, but, and there is a revision which is keep, kept uh, for all the modifications. So that's part of the mechanism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any transactionality or uh, sort of consistency in the syncing event-based or every event? Okay, so, so if you want to, re if you use it as a, uh, yes, is there any transaction, transactions thing? So if you use it internally, I mean, if, if you embed the project within your project, yes, we do have a mechanism for that. But if you interact it with graffiti outside of the Golang scope, like in Python, there is nothing. So it's, but if you embed it uh, as part of a Golang project, yes, there is a, a kind of mechanism for that, yeah. Any more questions? Do you have some support for on Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. Uh, but you have to implement it yourself. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. Then uh, let's thank the speakers again.